Hello everyone and welcome to this R Tyler review. Today I'm going to be talking to you through everything you need to know about this software and as usual if you do have any questions please leave them in the comment section down below. Also I'll be leaving a discount link in this video's description so that you can always get your money's worth for R Tyler. So here we are on the main page for R Tyler and basically what this website is and software because it is a downloadable software you will have to install a piece of software as you can see down here for this to actually run but it basically is an efficiency based software that allows you to basically make everything go much more smoothly. You're able to turn repetitive tasks into software that's done for you and basically focus your efforts on things that matter much, much more. So if we go to our main page, these are basically the overall layout of our dashboards. We have home, projects, results, bots, profiles. We can also create new projects and connect any sheets that we have and then preferences and my account at the top as well. Going to the homepage, we basically have Welcome to R Tyler, and you can enter a web page to get started. I've already imported Google and we've already selected Create New Profile. So this is basically where you can go into projects and this is where all of your profiles will be. So when you've hit, hit start, you basically will only be able to use one to begin with. And when we've created it, this is what it will look like. So we can inspect it, we can actually play it, we can configure it, or we can go to more options, or we can synchronize it with everything else that we've got. As you can see, you can synchronize it with a Google account if that is something that you want to do. So as you can see, if we go to inspect, this will immediately open up what the website will look like. And as you can see, you can either refresh or you can export once you've actually made some changes to the software. So as you can see here, we have a completely usable and functional Google page. Uh, but what you can do is go to the play button and you can either run this on the cloud or you can run it locally. So if there's a piece of software that you wanted to run um, or a website rather that you wanted to run on. So if whatever you had a website or a software, this is basically what you would then use. And you can go to the configure and you can configure it, the URL for it to inspect. You can enable tab isolation, silent mode. So under the project settings, you can basically edit all the detail and information about the, as you can see the project. So we have the name, the URL, concurrent tabs and things like that that you might want to have. You can also enter different URLs or you can import them from files, project or read an XML sitemap if you want to and have a number of URLs on there as well. You have the option for proxies as well. So you would simply use the save button to save anything and enter any proxies that you've got in this text box here. Uh, you can use external proxy rotation as you can see, select requests that you want to root or import uh, everything that you need that has a list of proxies that you have from a file and you need to make sure that is obviously configured and laid out correctly. So you would only want one per line and you also have a scheduler and logs that you're able to use as well. Under integration, you are able to enable file access. So FTP, you would enter your host name, the port and the CSV format, uh, the username and the password, and this will be able to uh, open up all the files in your website or your file system, whatever you're using this for um, in a software, for example, FileZilla, uh, something that I've used in the past. And many of you will probably have also used FileZilla as the most popular one that most people use. You also have SMPT, um, an email or SMTP, and you can enter the recipient and the sender. You can have a host, a port, a CSV format, or mainly just automation features you're able to do for this specific uh, project. You also have the option to enable a webhook by simply importing the webhook URL or importing it from a local file. And more options are basically reports, JavaScript actions, and a capture if you wanted to import a capture into your project. And some of the integrations that you are able to use are things like Google Sheets, WordPress, WooCommerce, all these different websites you are able to integrate with any of your projects and make sure that they all run effectively. So obviously the project page is really, really easy to actually get your hands on. You are able to use a project queue. So if a project is running, you are able to do that. But as you can see, we've got this one set to disabled. But as you can see, to get back to where we were, you can hit inspect or you can go ahead and hit play, run locally or cloud run, configure, or under more options, you can get a unique ID for that project, remove it, clone or copy it, or export it to their own file type. And once you've imported it, one of the other things that this website can do really, really well is gather information about other competitors. So you want to basically have a good target audience and you want to be able to target those people on a consistent basis. And this is one thing that this website can do. You can also get more information about the market, data, all of those sort of things to make sure that you're targeting the right people and that other competing uh, or competing websites aren't getting the best of you. So heading very quickly back to the configure setting, this is where everything really comes in. Scheduler is more like scheduling everything you need to do to do, uh, towards the actual project. So once you've imported the name and the URL, it will basically find everything it wants to know about that. 
Results is where you can view all of the, basically the results of the name, the results of the completed app for different projects that you've got. But what's the interesting bit is the bot page. Now, basically this we can't use, but what this basically would allow you to do is set up automation. Basically what this website allows you to do, and this is its main feature, is once you've got a project under your belt, you're able to automate almost any task that you could possibly imagine that is possible on a web browser. And that is its main feature. And these bots essentially can automate everything. So once you've got something that you want to do, instead of obviously spending time or wasting time, however you, you know, perceive it, what this allows you to do is make sure that all of those things are done completely automatically and that's one of the greatest things if you wanted to open up a website that could be automatic if you wanted to have a little look at information about a website and see how it's doing that's also possible if you wanted to go through everything and scan certain features on a website anything that you can imagine that you can do on a web browser you can basically grow your business with completely lowering down the amount of human interaction required so once you've got your bots we won't be able to show you it but it's a great great feature and it's really interesting to explore and then finally, we have our profiles button. So this is where we can view all of our profiles, the date of which the profile was created, and we can link accounts to specific profiles as well, along with clearing any accounts related to it or deleting that said profile. Now, if we did want to delete one, you would simply clear all results and hit yes, and that would clear everything, leaving the default one that we already had. Now, if you do go and hit new project, you have four different types. You have quick start, public template, manual mode, or import project. You can import them, but we're gonna go ahead and go for we'll do a public template and these basically these ones that are already um, created that you're able to do so a youtube search or youtube channel videos these are two that we can all understand we'll do a youtube search and we'll import that template and once this has all been uh, added we will wait for it to load and that will obviously import it for us and then what you'll be able to do from then on is use all of that information as you know from the projects tab we will actually have to delete this one first because uh, you're only able to have one on the trial so we'll hit new projects go to public template and we'll go back to youtube search and this will import it for us now once it's imported we can go back to the configure and this will have everything ready made for a youtube search so as you can see under all of these proxies these are still all empty but integrations and more options everything is tailor-made now for that specific thing so obviously hitting the inspect button will bring us back to google youtube is obviously owned by google um, but if we selected a different thing the url will would be related to that different website and this is where you would be able to get all the information uh, to do with these things and automate any features such as a YouTube search in this platform. So now it begs the question why might somebody want to use a software like this and I think the main people that this would be targeted towards are marketers, marketing agencies, or people who manage social media pages. So if you wanted to automate what other people do, see how other social media pages are doing specific things to market their products, you can basically automate all of that. Have a look at what they're doing, automate it. Have a look at how much they're getting, sort of comments and stuff, automate that as well, reading through and publishing them. Your mind is your limit with this. The sky is the absolute limit. And those are the type of people that would really take a grasp of this software really, really interestingly. So that is one of the main reasons why I think people would use it. Also, it saves time and time is money as we all know. And being able to increase the efficiency of different things in your software is an absolute must have. And every opportunity that people get in order to obviously increase the amount of time uh, the things that are done but decrease the amount of time it takes for those things to get done is what everybody really wants to do and that is just known fact the things I like about this software is obviously the simplicity there's not many tabs and you don't need to obviously connect many tabs or do anything for you to understand it the fact that all of your projects are in one place and it's very easy to do and you can view results very easily depending on your automations along with setting up bots which is obviously one of the main features is just absolutely excellent but I would highly recommend this software to anybody that really wants to save time but also automate their overall interaction with the internet but thank you everyone for watching i will see you next time and goodbye